The Korea Tour Card is a card that tourists or short-term travelers can use to ride all forms of public transportation as well as get discounts at popular attraction spots slash shopping destinations across South Korea. I have previously done a Korea Travel Pass comparison video but at that point the Korea Tour Card was not available. It is currently back in circulation and that's why in this video I'm going to be comparing the Korea Tour Card against all the other popular Korea Travel Passes. Subscribe for more useful travel content like this and let's get into it. In order to compare the Korea Tour Card against the other cards, we must first understand what exactly is the Korea Tour Card. Well, the Korea Tour Card basically combines the capabilities of a T-Money Card, which you can use to ride all forms of public transportation across South Korea, together with discounted access to over 180 popular tourist destinations, restaurants, and shops. You can easily purchase your Korea Tour Card when you arrive in South Korea, you will commonly find the Korea Tour Card kiosk machines which look like this at the arrival halls. It will cost you around 4,000 Korean won to get. Alternatively, you can also choose to purchase the Korea Tour Card at basically any convenience store across South Korea. Do note that you can only use cash to purchase the card, so if you don't already have some cash on hand, not to worry, there are plenty of exchange money counters at the arrival halls. You can top up your Korea Tour Card in the same way that you top up a T-Money card and that is via any recharge kiosk machines located at any subway stations as well as basically any Korean convenience store. Much like the purchase of the card, only Korean won cash will be accepted for top-ups. The maximum balance of a Korea Tour card is 500,000 Korean won, which is the same as a T-Money card. So if you still have a sizable balance towards the end of your trip, you may choose to get your balance refunded. And you can basically do this at any Korean convenience store, subway stations, and T-Money Town, which is located at exit 10 of the Seoul station. I've included the Google Map pin of the T-Money Town in my description box. So what exactly are these uh, amazing benefits? that I'm getting with the Korea Tour Card, Steve. Why thank you for asking as that leads quite nicely into this next section of the video where we compare the Korean Tour Card and the T-Money Card. As mentioned earlier on in the video, the Korea Tour Card already contains the T-Money Card capabilities. And therefore, the only key difference between the T-Money Card and the Korea Tour Card is that the Korea Tour Card gives you the ability to purchase discounted ticket accesses to popular tourist destinations shopping, restaurants, cafes, activities such as handbook rentals, river cruises, and many, many more. And if you refer to their website, you can see that, for example, you can get 20 to 30% off the entrance tickets to End Seoul Tower, 10% off Seoul Sky, and 20,000 Korean won off the DMZ tour, aka a tour of the demilitarized zone between South and North Korea, just to name a few. The card also offers you discounts and special offers at shopping malls, restaurants, cinemas, and many more. And one important thing to note about the Korea Tour Card is the discounts and privileges are not only in Seoul. In fact, there are other benefits that you can get, for example, if you were to be in Busan or Jeju Island. And so if you were planning to visit all of these places anyway, then the Korea Tour Card is definitely a fantastic choice. But if you've been doing your trip research or you watched my previous Korea Travel Pass comparison video, you may be now wondering what the difference is between a Korea Tour Card and a Discover Soul Pass. And I can't blame you, after all, the Discover Soul Pass does give you discounts or free access to over 70 tourist attraction spots across Seoul. So let's talk about the difference. And there are definitely pros and cons to consider. The Discover Soul Pass, for example, offers discounts or free access to over 70 attraction spots across Seoul, which is more than the Korea Tour Card in terms of coverage in Seoul. However, the Korea Tour Card also offers discounts and privileges in other parts of South Korea such as Busan and Jeju Island. The second thing to note is that the discounts and privileges offered under a Discover Soul Pass is only valid for as long as the pass is. You can choose to purchase your Discover Soul Pass in 48, 72 or 120 hours. After your Discover Soul Pass validity has lapsed, you will no longer be able to access any 
of the discounts or privileges offered under the pass. Whereas your Korea tour card, discounts and privileges are valid for your entire trip. The third thing to consider would be pricing. As the Discover Seoul Pass covers more areas in Seoul, the price is quite a bit higher than the Korea tour card. And so to cut a long story short, the Discover Seoul Pass is a fantastic option if you plan to stay only within Seoul and plan to do a lot of sightseeing. However, if you're going to be moving around South Korea, the Korea Tour card might be a better option for you. But what about the Wild Pass? All the cards we've mentioned so far, such as the Discover Soul Pass and the Korea Tour card and the Wild Pass, all already have the T-Money capability built in. So they have that functionality in common. However, the Wild Pass's main selling point is that it will allow you to exchange money from your home currency to Korean won at a competitive rate and you can do so either via entering cash at the Wild Pass exchange kiosks located at any subway station or via the app using your credit card. Once you've loaded up the card, you can use the Wild Pass to pay wherever credit cards are accepted across South Korea. The Wild Pass accepts money from 16 different currencies and you can check the exchange rate they are offering either via their official website or within the app. The card also has some discounts and privileges at popular restaurants and shopping destinations across South Korea and it also offers cashback rewards every single time you spend using the Wild Pass. And so if you're someone who doesn't really want to do as many tourist spots or sightseeing but instead want to do a lot of shopping and eating then the Wild Pass could be a fantastic choice for you. The one pass that I will mention in this video that is slightly different from the other passes I've mentioned so far is the climate card. I've covered the climate card in plenty of detail in some of my previous videos which I will link here if you want to watch that. But basically in summary, the climate card gives you unlimited access to subways and buses in Seoul for the entire period of its validity. I believe it comes in 1, 2, 3, 5, 7 and 30 days. Whereas with the Korea Tour Card, Discover Soul Pass and Wild Pass, you will need to pay per subway ride. The Climate Card, however, cannot be used outside of Seoul. And so basically, if you're planning to stay within Seoul and plan to catch a lot of public transport, then the Climate Card could be the way to go for you. However, if you're planning to explore places outside of Seoul, then having the Climate Card alone will not suffice. As you have seen so far, all these different passes have different functionalities. So you may even want to consider combining some of these passes to maximize on your travel savings. For example, if you only plan to stay within Seoul, you may want to consider combining the Discover Seoul Pass with a Climate Card so that you can get free or discounted accesses to all the top tourist destinations within Seoul and take unlimited public transport while you're there. But if you plan to travel to other places such as Jeju or Busan, then the Korea Tour Card could be a better choice, especially when compared against a normal T-Money card. And so in summary, whether or not you should get a Korea Tour Card really depends on what you're planning to do during your trip. There are of course other things to consider before your upcoming trip to South Korea other than travel passes. I have previously done a first timer's guide to South Korea which in where I cover everything I learned during my research for my trip as well as lessons that I learned the hard way when I was there. I definitely recommend watching that before you go so that you don't end up making the same mistakes that I did. I've linked that video at the end of this video so that you can go ahead and watch that next. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe if you found this video helpful and informative. It really does help appease the YouTube algorithm gods but more importantly it just makes my day as a content creator. And if you got to this point of the video, thank you so much for watching. I really mean it when I say it means absolutely everything. Hey guys, it's Editing Steve jumping in real quick to tell you that we did it. As of the writing of this video, we have officially hit 10,000 subscribers on this channel. Yes, I said we because I feel like we did this together, you know? And I am gonna celebrate by booking my next trip to Korea so that I can bring you more content such as this one that you're watching right now. But yes, I wanted to pop in real quick as I'm editing this video to really sincerely thank you for being so supportive 
of this channel and everything that I do. It really does mean everything. As always, I hope that you have a fantastic day ahead or that you've already had a good day. I will see you very soon in the next video. Ciao!